Welcome to day 22. We begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that you open our hearts and minds so that we may hear your voice and be given the courage to act upon it throughout this day. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I am excited because we are into our next chapter, chapter 4, where we now begin speaking about love for our neighbor. And St. Alphonsus begins with a verse from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And so we begin. It is impossible to love the Lord our God without at the same time loving our neighbor. The commandment that obliges us to love our God obliges us also to love our neighbor. And this commandment we have from God, that he who loveth God love also his brother. From the first letter of John, chapter 4, verse 21. From these words of the apostle, St. Thomas Aquinas concludes that the one virtue of love embraces the love of God and the love of neighbor. St. Jerome tells us that when the disciples of St. John the Evangelist asked him why he spoke so often of brotherly love, he replied, because it is the commandment of the Lord, and the fulfillment of this alone is sufficient for eternal salvation. St. Catherine of Genoa once said to our Lord, O oh my God, thou commandest me to love my neighbor, and I can love no one but thee. Our Savior replied, My daughter, whoever loves me, loves everything that is loved by me. Why, therefore, must we love our neighbor? because he is loved by God. St. John was therefore right when he called him a liar who says that he loves God but hates his neighbor. Our Lord has promised that he will regard, as done to himself, what we do for the least of our brethren. Amen, I say to you, as long as you did it to one of these, my least brethren, you did it to me. From Matthew chapter 25, verse 40. From this, St. Catherine of Genoa concludes, if you wish to know how much a person loves his God, see how much he loves his neighbor. Christian charity is one of the principal fruits of the redemption. The prophet Isaiah had, had foretold this truth in the following words, The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the sheep shall abide together, and a little child shall lead them. That's in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 6. By these words, he wished to say that the followers of Jesus Christ, though from different nations and different climes and of unlike characters and inclinations, would nevertheless live peacefully together, for brotherly love would induce them to practice mutual forbearance. And St. Luke, when speaking of the first Christians, says, The multitude of believers had but one heart and one soul. This was the effect of the prayer that our Redeemer addressed to his Heavenly Father on the eve of his sacred passion. Holy Father, keep them in thy name, whom thou hast given me, that they may be one, as we also are. John chapter 17, verse 11. And that is where St. Alphonsus leaves us for today. <clears throat> so as we're beginning to speak about love for our neighbor, it's important for us to remember that it's not a subset. We love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind, but we love our neighbor as ourselves. We don't get to do one without doing the other. And personally, I think this is a big reason why so many people do not believe that God and Jesus is the Christ because we don't live out that love of neighbor. How often is it that we are passing rash judgments or we are gossiping or slandering about people or uh, we fail to do almsgiving, uh, we fail to love our enemies? All of these different things that are evidence for those who don't believe of the fact that your Jesus isn't real. 
So during this Lenten season in particular, I think it's beautiful how the church, she gives us the suggestion of almsgiving, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Prayer so that we can grow in love of God, fasting so we can grow in proper love of ourselves, and almsgiving so we can grow in love of our neighbor. So absolutely perfect of how it is that Alphonsus tells us, using the words of St. Catherine of Genoa in particular, you know, why do we have to love our neighbor? Because God loves him. I think this is one of the hardest things for us to grasp, particularly even when we're not doing rash judgments or, you know, but like we'll look at a murderer, for example, someone who objectively we can say has done great evil. They've killed another person and yet they are loved by God. Can we do no less? So I think that is our resolution for today. <clears throat> I think the challenge that each of us, including myself, needs to go about is to reflect who is it that I need to love, even though, in my opinion, my human opinion, uh, in, in <clears throat> they're not worthy of it. They could have done something that was absolutely horrendous or, you know, and unforgivable in our eyes. But the fact is, is that nothing is beyond God's power to forgive and his mercy. And we have to strive to be perfect like our Heavenly Father is perfect. This takes time, so don't get upset with yourself if you're going, oh gosh, that person comes to mind again. Don't worry about it. Rather, entrust it to God and say, Lord, help me love this person. Remember, love is about willing the good of another. And the question we all have to ask ourselves is, in the final, you know, when it comes down to it, do you want the person that you have issues with or the person that you don't deem worthy, do you want them to go to hell? Do you want the person to go to hell? And if we do, then we need to reflect because the judgments which we cast upon others is the same judgment that will be cast upon us. So I'll kind of leave us with that deep thought for today. But your resolution is, today is to call to mind someone that you don't believe is worthy of forgiveness or even God's love and to ask God to help you be able to love them as he loves you. Know my prayers for you especially on this challenging day, and especially as we continue this journey together. See you tomorrow. God bless.